In the previous video, we took a look at programming the basic numerical differentiation functions on Mathematica. Now we'll look at programming the higher accuracy formulas. If we take a look at the higher accuracy formula for the forward finite difference, we see that the Taylor series is expanded all the way up to f double prime. Then, the basic forward finite difference formula for the second derivative is subbed in for the f double prime. This causes the derivative to have a higher accuracy since now, the error term is directly proportional to the square of the step size. However, it also requires more data points since we have an xi plus 2 term in addition to our xi plus 1 term. Now the function is nearly identical to the function from before. ffd2 will have an input of x. I'll scroll down to give a space. We'll need the length of x, and we also need a table with a placeholder of 0. And now the length of our vector will be n minus 2, because the derivative can only be found up to the third last data point. Then we'll just use a do loop again to do our calculations, storing everything in xp of i. And we want the value of x. And now looking at the formula, minus f of xi plus 2 plus 4, f of xi plus 1, minus 3 f of xi. divided by 2 times the step size, which is x of i plus 1, comma 1, minus x of i, comma 1. And then we have i going from 1 to the third last data point. And we want to output xp. Now testing that, using that same g vector that we had before, and plotting it against the true derivative, 1 plus 25x squared, with respect to x, evaluated at x set to i, where i goes from negative 1 to 1. And then an epilogue, grabbing the points from the FFD of 2. Shift enter. Here are our data points. And this time, we get a lot closer to our derivative, which is the blue line, aside from the points still being slightly shifted to the left. And we can see that this time, we're missing the last two data points. Now for the backward finite difference, the method for deriving the equation is the same, with derivatives starting from the third data point, because we have an xi minus 1 and an xi minus 2 term. And we also have an error that is also directly proportional to the square of the step size. Now copying and pasting, we'll change these to the BFDs of 2. And the length of our vector will be n minus 2 again, because the derivative can only be found starting from the third data point. And now i will go from 3 all the way to n, meaning that we need to change xp to have an index of i minus 2. And now changing the equation, we have positive f of xi minus 2, a negative f of xi minus 1, and a positive 3f of xi. Then we'll change our step size, positive x of i, and minus x of i minus 1. 
Now shift enter. As expected, we also get very close with a derivative, except for the areas with high slope changes, where our black data points are slightly shifted to the right in comparison to the blue true derivative. And we aren't able to take the derivatives of the first two data points. Finally, let's look at the higher accuracy centered finite difference. If we recall from before, the centered finite difference already had an error proportional to the square of the step size and was the most accurate of the three methods. Now its error is proportional to the fourth power of the step size. However, we now need four extra data points, two succeeding data points and two preceding data points. Now pasting the function we just made, we'll change these to CFDs. And now the length of our vector will be n minus 4, because the derivative can only be found starting from the third point up to the third last point. And now modifying the equation, you go all the way up to n minus 2 from 3. We have a negative f of xi plus 2, a positive 8, f of xi plus 1, A negative 8, f of x i minus 1, and a positive f of x i minus 2. Then we have 12 times the step size. Now shift enter. And we see that our data points are nearly directly over the actual derivative in the blue. So that was it for the numerical differentiation methods using Mathematica. We saw that both FFD and BFD had very similar accuracy, while CFD is more accurate but requires more data points. We also saw how the graph shifts depending on which method we use. FFD shifts to the left. BFD shifts to the right, and CFD has very minimal shifts. In the next part of the tutorial, we'll take a look at the alternative of using Excel for numerical differentiation.